So can AI explain itself? In other words, if I take an AI model and ask it questions about any other AI model, I would expect it to answer my questions. But it turns out that the model simply does not know about any other models. So can a simple workaround for this problem lie with Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG in, in short? I managed to develop a chat app by using Langflow and Streamlit with minimal coding and solve this very problem. It uses a RAG pipeline in the backend and I provided the RAG system with all the papers of the Phi model series from Microsoft and eventually the system was able to answer my questions about the Phi family of models. So in this video, I will walk you through how I went about developing this pipeline and along the way, I demonstrate how easy it is to develop a chat app using Langflow. So without further ado, let's get started. So to motivate the problem, I installed the Olama on my MacBook Pro and I ran the Llama 2 model and I asked a simple question, what is the difference between the Phi 1 and Phi 1.5 models from Microsoft? The answer that it came up with was a little bit surprising. It hallucinated a lot and then gave answers like, in terms of networking, like Phi 1 offers gigabit Ethernet port, while Phi 1.5 offers 10 gigabit Ethernet port for faster networking performance. And it said software support, and both models are compatible with the latest version of Windows HPC Server, but Phi 1.5 has additional software support for Linux and open source applications. So clearly, this is hallucination. So by the end of our video, let's find out if we develop a RAG pipeline, would we solve this very problem? And will the model answer in a sensible way? So let's start with installing Langflow. Now, one of the main things with installing Langflow is that we need to make sure that we are on Python 3.10. I spent quite a lot of time fiddling with 3.12 and finally figured out that the problem was the Python version. And once I moved to Python 3.10, I was seamlessly able to install Langflow. So let's create a virtual environment that is Python 3.10 and call it RAG app. Now that we have created the virtual environment named a RAG app, all that we have to do is pip install Langflow minus U and that is going to install Langflow seamlessly. Once the installation is complete, all that we have to do is just do Langflow run, and we should be able to see the Langflow UI with which we can readily create all of our flow and then create our app seamlessly. So after running Langflow run, we can see that it is given the access URL with which we can readily access the user interface for Langflow. And this is the user interface we get. It's got a few collections and it's got few components and it's got flows. And because I haven't got any flows yet, I don't see anything here. So we can start a new project. And once we start a new project, we can see there are quite a few components that are just we can drag and drop here in order to create our flow. So in order to ingest the PDF documents into Langflow, we need to use Py PDF Loader. Let's drag and drop one of those, actually four of those, because we have four papers that we are going to ingest into our Langflow system. And so we're going to have to just create four of these I've just literally copy pasted one, two, three, and four. I can basically provide the file path here. I'm going to provide the file path for all the four papers that we're going to use uh, for our rack system. So as you can see here, I've given the path for all the four documents in this Py PDF loaders. For example, the first one is Lava Phi paper. The second one is Phi 15, 1.5 paper. And the third one is uh, 5.3 technical report. And the fourth one is Lava Phi paper. We now need to pass all these documents into a recursive character text splitter. Basically, we can use any character splitter that we want, but we have opted for recursive character text splitter. So we can just search for it here, recursive character text splitter, and just drag and drop it here. And all these documents become the input for the recursive character text splitter. So if we just click on here where we get the plus and it's just drag it and drop it here. That means the output of the Py PDF loader becomes the input to the recursive character text splitter. I'm going to do the same for all of the uh, 
four documents that we're going to use. And once we have those, then we can go and modify the parameters that we have there in the recursive character text splitter. If we just go here, by default, the chunk size is 1000 and the chunk overlap is 200. So I'm going to reduce this to 100. I mean, it's just a choice. We can go for anything, but we need to make sure that's a little bit of overlap between the different chunk sizes. And a chunk size of 1000 sounds reasonable, but if you have very less memory, then you can probably opt for a smaller chunk size. So the type of separator for all of the chunks is the is text, and also we're going to separate them using a comma. Once we have the recursive character text splitter, then we can move on to uh, feeding these text splitters to the embedding model. So for the embedding, we're going to be using the Olama embedding model. And once we have it here, we can set any temperature value that you want between minus one and one. I'm just gonna set a temperature of zero. So the different output embeddings from the Olama model, they have to be stored in some persistent store. And we all know by now the vector dbs are the choice for this. And there are quite a few vector dbs available. We're gonna use the FICE vector store. And we can see that it takes the documents and the embedding model as input. And at the output, it gives the it needs to be connected to a, a base retriever. We're going to connect the chunk documents to the vector the vector store, and we're going to connect the embedding model, which is going to be used by the vector store, in order to uh, create the embeddings and then store the embeddings. So once we do this part, we now have sorted out the rag. It has the potential to retrieve the documents. It has the potential to embed them into different vectors. And then it has the potential to store persistently if needed. So once we have sorted out the rag element, now we need to take care of the uh, chat element of the pipeline. And for that, we need to make sure that the model, the LLM that we choose, can be used as a chat model. And for that, we are going to be opting for the Llama 2 model. And we will be using the Olama version, which can be easily run on a small device like a laptop. So let's choose the, the model that we're going to use. For that, we can go for chat Olama and we can see that chat Olama is available there. We can also go for chat OpenAI, but I'm going to go for the open source, which is chat Olama. And so once we have that, we need to make sure that we provide the base URL where it is running. So in our case, it will be in this port 11434 and the model is Llama 2 model and there's temperature again as a parameter that we can choose. I'm just going to leave it like that. And if at all you want to have a look at the code that's going to be executed, you can just click on this and you can see the entire code and you can edit this one and you can play around with it and you can check it and finally save it if at all you want to make any changes to it. Because it's going to be a chat application, we need to hold the history of the different chats. We need some form of a memory. For that, we will be using a conversational buffer memory. If we search for conversation, we can see that there's a conversation buffer memory, which we can readily use. So I'm just going to drag and drop that. This conversation buffer memory needs to be connected to the the Llama 2 model by some means and also the output of the vector DB needs to be connected to this chat model so the way that we will connect all the three components together is by using conversational retrieval chat component we can see that this component takes the LLM as input and takes the memory as one of the inputs and also the retriever as one of the inputs and finally it gives us output the conversational retrieval chain first i'm going to connect the base model to the llm it got connected fine and then i'm going to connect the conversational buffer memory to the memory so that went through fine and also i'm going to be connecting the vector store to the retriever so now that all three of those are sorted i think we pretty much have our pipeline to quickly walk you through what we've got here we have got four of the pdf loaders for each of the PDF files, which are our papers related to PHY models, for example, PHY 1.5 or PHY 3 or the uh, Lava PHY paper. All those PDF loaders are connected to the recursive character text splitter, which is going to take care of chunking the different text that's available in these documents. And then we're going to use the Olama embedding model 
in order to do the embedding on these documents. And the embedded vectors are going to be stored in this FICE vector DB. We also have the chat model, which is going to be our Llama 2 model. For the conversational buffer, we're going to be using a bu buffer memory element. And all these together are connected by the conversational retrieval chain. I think pretty much we are done with the entire pipeline here. In order to compile this pipeline, we just have to click on this button here and it takes a while actually. So once it gets done, we can notice that all these components have an amber color indicating that they're not ready. So eventually it compiled and we can see that all the colors have changed to green like I had promised indicating that the pipeline is fine. So if we want to sort of quickly find out how the chat works, then we can click on this button here at the bottom right. And we can see that the uh, application is ready to answer any questions. And we can simply just ask any question. For example, we could say, what is the difference between the Phi 1 model and Phi 1.5 model? So it ran reasonably well for a model that's running on a MacBook with just 8 gig RAM. And we got this response. Now the model is making it explicit that it's giving this answer based on the provided context, which is the retrieved uh, documents. And so it's given this answer and it's given five differences. One is the size of the model. It says Phi 1 is 7 billion parameters, while the other one is 3 billion parameters. And the next one is the vocabulary size. Phi 1 model has a vocabulary size of 320,000, while the other one has a size of 100,000. And the contact length, again, the context length of Phi 1 being a previous model to Phi 1.5 is just 4K, while Phi 1.5 has a longer 8K context. And again, there's difference in the training pipeline and eventually there's training in the performance. So it summarizes the main difference between a Phi 1 and 1.5 or the vocabulary size, context, training pipeline and the performance. And the Phi 1.5 model is smaller in size but has undergone additional training and fine tuning which allows it to perform as well as or better than the larger model in certain tasks. So I feel that's quite impressive, particularly it's just listing the main differences in bullet points. Now we may be at a situation where we actually want to use this flow in a separate app. So the best way I found out is by exporting it with these buttons here. So this one export option. So if we click on that, we can save the created flow as a separate JSON file. Let's say ragapp.json. And we can also give some uh, descriptions, but I'm not going to give any description here. So if we click on download flow, that's downloaded the flow as a JSON file. On top of that, we can also use this flow as an API that serves a different app. For example, we can just uh, curl this one and then get a response, or we could use it as a Python API. So if we just copy paste this entire code in our app that we are creating, we give this a flow ID and the base API URL. We should be able to query this as an API or treat this as an API and get a response from this. In my experience, I found that this was slightly more challenging compared to exporting directly as a JSON using this functionality and then using it in a separate app. So that's the next step that we are going to look into, which is building a Streamlit app using the exported JSON. So we'll build a Streamlit app and then we will query or talk with the PDF files that we have created and then find out how the the, the exported JSON file is responding. So to get Steamlit working for our app, we need to install Steamlit, which we can do by doing a pip install Streamlit and the installation starts. So there's another package that we need to install, which is the Langchain community. So we can install by doing pip install Langchain community, and we should be able to install that. So to begin with, we created a directory uh, called the simple rag app where we're going to have the code for the Streamlit app. And we have all the papers downloaded. This is optional, but I've still got the papers here in this repository downloaded. These are the papers that we use to feed the, the RAG uh, pipeline. And this is the RAG.json file, which we exported from the Lang flow. Then we can go about developing the Streamlit app. We should start by creating 
Python file, which is for the app. So inside this app.py is where we'll stick in all the code to run the Steamlet app and also to import the JSON that we just created from Langflow. Let's start doing it. So in the app.py, I've imported the Steamlet as ST, and I've also imported the load flow from JSON function, which is gonna load the JSON that we exported from Langflow. And we're going to import that or load that into this app using the load flow from JSON. And these are the code that I literally copied from the Python code provided by the Langflow again. So if we go back to the uh, flow Langflow UI where we uh, connect the different components, we can see that on the top left, there's a code. If we go under Python API, then we can see clearly where I have taken the tweaks from and I've also taken the run flow from the same place it's exactly the same code which i copied and then just pasted into the app.py so I've, i haven't changed any of those like these tweaks uh these are places where you can actually introduce some changes if you want to the components that are there in the langflow for example, if you want to change something to do with the uh, the embedding model, then you can probably provide it here. Similarly, if you want to change anything to do with the uh, PDF loader, so we have four PDF files. So there are four PDF loaders. Three of them are here and one is here. So you can provide uh, some parameters if you want to make any changes to them. And this function, again, is literally just provided by Langflow and I haven't changed any of it. And we just have the run flow. Uh, function uh, readily pasted here and the chat function is the one that I've actually implemented in order to run the app so if we scroll down we can start from here so I'm giving the title for the page which is AI for AI and I've just given the uh, title which says welcome to AI explains AI world and I've also created a system prompt which is more of like, this is the standard system prompt these days. So just say, you're a helpful assistant who can explain concepts. And then I'm providing um, the system prompt as the system message to the session. And I'm just doing some session management for Streamlit. And then finally, the introductory chat message in the app says, hi, I'm your AI assistant. So from there, we just get the prompt from the user and then we pass the prompt to the chat function, which is at the top. We can see that the chat function takes in the prompt, creates a container, and inside the container, we have the human prompt and also the message from AI or the model, uh, which will be displayed. So this is the format in which we need to provide the input from the user. So basically, we just have to create a dictionary where we have the question and the input query from the user, and then we call that the input. And finally, that input gets passed as the input to the flow, which we are loading using the load for flow from JSON. And this is the JSON file that we exported from Langflow. And once we have the flow loaded, we just pass the input to it and then finally get the output from it. So the output uh, has quite a few elements inside it. So what we are interested in is the chat history. There's also something called the answer that's returned in the output dictionary. So, but here we are capturing the chat history and we are picking up the last one and then we are picking up the content from the last chat history, which turns out to be the response from the AI model. And so we take that at the output and finally we just pass it as the element to display in the UI and then we just run the streamlit session. So it's that, that simple as that. Just one function to run the streamlit chat and one function to run the flow and there are different configurable parameters for different components. So once we have coded the app, we can start the app using streamlit run app. Once we run the command, it's going to churn out all these code and it's going to take a while actually to sort of load the lang flow and eventually it's going to provide the URL to look at the app. So here is the UI for the app. And as we can see, it says, welcome to the AI explains AI world. And I am your AI assistant. So the question that I asked is, what are the differences between Phi 1 and Phi 1.5 model from Microsoft? And the response we get is, hello there, I'll be happy to help you understand the differences between 
Pi 1 and Pi 1.5 models from Microsoft. It goes on to say that Pi 1 is a language model that was introduced in 2021 as part of their project Premonition. It's an LLM that is trained on a data set of text from internet and it also continues to say that Pi 1.5 is an enhanced version of Pi 1 which was released in 2023. It's a large language model that is trained on a data set of text from the internet but it includes additional filtering and processing steps to improve its performance and it lists the key differences between the two. So overall it says Phi 1.5 is an updated and enhanced version of Phi 1 with more capacity, better training data and improved performance. However, it's worth noting that both the models are very powerful and capable and their performance will depend on the specific task and data set being used. So this pretty much resembles the same response that we got when we actually played around with uh, the Langflow. When we ran the Langflow as an app and over here, we also found a similar response from the model. So that wraps us up. That's how we can go about putting together different components of Langflow and then create a final flow as a JSON file and then import that uh, into an app development framework like Streamlit and we can straight away create an app with a few lines of code. So hopefully that's useful and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.